Thought Vibration, or the Law of Attraction in the Thought World. Chapter 13. The Attractive Power, Desire Force. We have discussed the necessity of getting rid of fear, that your desire may have full strength with which to work. Supposing that you have mastered this part of the task, or at least started on the road to mastery, I will now call your attention to another important branch of the subject. I allude to the subject of mental leaks. No, I don't mean the leakage arising from your failure to keep your own secrets. That is also important, but forms another story. The leakage I am now referring to is in that occasioned by the habit of having the attention attracted to and distracted by every passing fancy. In order to attain a thing, it is necessary that the mind should fall in love with it and be conscious of its existence. Almost to the exclusion of everything else, you must get in love with the thing you wish to attain, just as much as you would if you were to meet the girl or man you wished to marry. I do not mean that you should become a monomaniac upon the subject, and should lose all interest in everything else in the world. That won't do, for the mind must have recreation and change. But I do mean that you must be so set upon the desired thing that all else will seem of secondary importance. A man in love may be pleasant to everyone else, and may go through the duties and pleasures of life with good spirit, but underneath it all he is humming to himself, just one girl, and every one of his actions is bent toward getting that girl, and making a comfortable home for her. Do you see what I mean? You must get in love with the thing you want, and you must get in love with it in earnest. None of this latter-day flirting, on today and off tomorrow, sort of love, but the good old-fashioned kind, that used to make it impossible for a young man to get to sleep unless he took a walk around his best girl's house, just to be sure it was still there. That's the real kind. And the man or woman in search of success must make of that desired thing his ruling passion. He must keep his mind on the main chance. Success is jealous. That's why we speak of her as feminine. She demands a man's whole affection, and if he begins flirting with other fair charmers, she soon turns her back upon him. If a man allows his strong interest in the main chance to be sidetracked, he will be the loser. Mental force operates best when it is concentrated. You must give to the desired thing your best and most earnest thought, just as the man who is thoroughly in love will think out plans and schemes whereby he may please the fair one, so will a man who is in love with his work or business give it his best thought, and the result will be that a hundred and one plans will come into his field of consciousness, many of which are very important. The mind works on the subconscious plane, remember, and almost always along the lines of the ruling passion or desire. It will fix up things and patch together plans and schemes, and when you need them the most, it will pop them into your consciousness, and you'll feel like hurrahing, just as if you had received some valuable aid from outside. But if you scatter your thought force, the subconscious mind will not know just how to please you, and the result is that you are apt to be put off from this source of aid and assistance. Beside this, you will miss the powerful result of concentrated thought in the conscious working out of the details of your plans. And then again, the man whose mind is full of a dozen interests fails to exert the attracting power that is manifested by the man of one ruling passion, and he fails to draw to him persons, things, and results that will aid in the working out of his plans, and will also fail to place himself in the current of attraction whereby he is brought into contact with those who will be glad to help him because of harmonious interests. I have noticed in my own affairs, that when I would allow myself to be sidetracked by anything outside of my regular line of work, it would only be a short time before my receipts dropped off and my business showed signs of a lack of vitality. Now many say that this was because I had left undone some things that I would have done if my mind had been centred on the business. This is true, but I have noticed like results in cases where there was nothing to be done cases in which the seed was sown and the crop was awaited. And in just such cases, as soon as I directed my thought to the matter, the seed began to sprout. I do not mean that I had to send out great mental waves with the idea of affecting people. 
Not a bit of it. I simply began to realize what a good thing I had, and how much people wanted it, and how glad they would be to know of it, and all that sort of thing, and lo, my thoughts seemed to vitalize the work, and the seed began to sprout. This is no mere fancy, for I have experienced it on several occasions. I have spoken to many others on the subject, and I find that our experiences tally perfectly. So don't get into the habit of permitting these mental leaks. Keep your desire fresh and active, and let it get in its work without interference from conflicting desires. Keep in love with the thing you wish to attain. Feed your fancy with it. See it as accomplished already, but don't lose your interest. Keep your eye on the main chance, and keep your one ruling passion strong and vigorous. Don't be a mental polygamist. One mental love is all that a man needs, that is, one at a time. Some scientists have claimed that something that might as well be called love is at the bottom of the whole of life. They claim that love of the plant for water causes it to send forth its roots until the loved thing is found. They say that the love of the flower for the sun causes it to grow away from the dark places so that it may receive the light. The so-called chemical affinities are really a form of love, and desire is a manifestation of this universal life love. So I am not using a mere figure of speech when I tell you that you must love the thing you wish to attain. Nothing but intense love will enable you to surmount the many obstacles placed in your path. Nothing but that love will enable you to bear the burdens of the task. The more desire you have for a thing, the more you love it, and the more you love it, the greater will be the attractive force exerted towards its attainment, both within yourself and outside of you. So love but one thing at a time. Don't be a mental Mormon.